We briefly showed you some of the components in the toolbox by dragging over a button. Now let's take a look at it a little more closely. Based on the type of application I create, the toolbox will change and give me controls that are appropriate for that application. In this case, because I chose a web application, I see components that I can add to a web form. For a Windows application, I would see different controls that are available. Visual Studio is smart enough to understand what controls are applicable to the different project type that I choose to use. I can collapse the tabs that are available in my toolbox and focus specifically on a subset of controls. For example, in the Data tab, I can strictly work with data source controls or data list controls to view this data. Likewise, I can have the same type of categorization for navigation, and I can look at a tree view or a sitemap path of the different elements in my web page. We also have a tab for the AJAX extensions. As we mentioned earlier, AJAX is built directly into an ASP.NET application, and you can consume it readily using the toolbar. It's not a separate add-on as it was with Visual Studio 2005. We can also customize the toolbox. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can right-click and select Add Tab. We can give this tab a name. Right now, we don't have any controls in this tab. We can choose to drag an item onto this, or we can right-click and select Choose Items. We can choose from a set of .NET Framework components, and we can add them directly to our form. I can choose to sort these by namespace, which I find the easiest, as it groups together all the .NET components under the system.namespace, and I can view them together and see what's missing. By selecting the checkbox on the far left, I can choose to add it to my toolbox. I can also work with COM components and choose to add these, as there is interoperability between a .NET container and a COM component. Let's go ahead and cancel out of this and delete this tab. Select OK to continue.